Oh! He can't open it. What are you gonna do? Ignore. <laughs> Ed, that you? What's that? Hello! Hey everyone, as always, Jarek here. Longtime viewers of the channel know I love Rainbow Six Vegas. I have put thousands upon thousands of hours into both Vegas 1 and Vegas 2. However, I never played the PSP version because like many of you probably assumed, you might have just thought it was a demake, like just Rainbow Six Vegas ported to the PSP. But that's not what it is at all. It's a totally separate game with the same name which I didn't know until recently, and that's so weird to me. But before I explain what exactly this is, I need to thank today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community for people who like to be creative, where millions come together to learn how to improve their creative expression. Skillshare has thousands of classes for people who are creative and curious. There's topics on illustration, design, photography, videos, freelancing, and many more. So Skillshare is for the curious person that wants to learn more. Maybe you have a hobby you want to get into, but you just don't know where to start. Skillshare is here just for that. Skillshare has plenty of classes for all skill levels that will fit your schedule. Most are under 60 minutes and members get unlimited access to the site. The class I'm sharing with you today is Learn Guitar, The Complete Beginner's Guide by Mark Barnacle. Why am I telling you to go learn guitar? Because it's awesome. I've noticed a lot of my viewers are really into metal, which makes sense. If you're into FPS games, there's a big overlap there. It's easily my favorite genre. If I was going to learn an instrument, it would probably be bass, but more people seem interested in guitar so I figured I'd throw this one out to you. This will go from the basics of the guitar to writing your own music. So if you've been listening to metal and hearing that awesome riff and you never knew how to play it but you always wanted to, perhaps think about checking this class out. So hey, if you want to try out Skillshare, the first 1,000 subscribers that click that link below get a one month free trial of premium membership. And as always, a huge thanks goes to Skillshare. I love what they do. Also, I'm doing a giveaway courtesy of the head-on devs. If you want a good 90s retro shooter, then all you gotta do is subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. There's no method to winning, it'll just be the comment that I like the most. It could be something that makes me laugh, it could be something I just agree with and thought was a really good point. I will reply to the winning comment and send you your key through Twitter or Discord or email or whatever is easiest for you. Okay, Rambo 6 Vegas on the PSP. This is a really tall task because a tactical shooter is difficult to make on PC, let alone a PSP. I guess let's start with the graphics, which probably should be the easiest part because Rambo 6 Vegas on PC didn't look very good anyway. And just like the PC version, this one doesn't look good either even for a PSP game. I should immediately clarify that I emulated this game by using PPSSPP. Yes, that's the name of the emulator. You can all laugh now. Anyway, this emulator really didn't like Rainbow Six Vegas. So every single level with the exception of one had terrible artifacting and all of these glitches. Why is there no music? That's a good question. Oh boy. <laughs> what is going on here? Oh, this game's a little rough on an emulator. So for right now, I will show you that one level that works perfectly fine to give you an idea of what the graphics should be like. And for a PSP game, I mean, they're passable, I guess, but it's on the lower end of PSP games. The textures aren't great, the animations aren't great, the sound design isn't great, like pretty much most of this is substandard. Something that really stood out to me was the reloading animations. Now, don't get me wrong, just because a game doesn't have realistic reloading animations in the most realistic guns, that does not kill a game. I see people leaving comments like that all the time where it's like, wow, this game sucks, the guns are so unrealistic. So? If the game is fun, who cares? So no, something like this is not going to kill the game, but I do feel the need to point these out because Rainbow Six Vegas 1 and 2 have pretty realistic reloading animations. They're not the highest of quality, but they're realistic to the actual guns. Yeah, you can go ahead and throw all of that out the window for Vegas on PSP. Uh, let's see how the reload is. What? What? First off is the bolt action sound. Secondly, what is he doing in the front of it? It's the MP5 reload, but like shifted. Why is it a left-handed bolt? It's the tiniest bolt I've ever- I thought that was the safety. What even is the animation? This doesn't even make sense. The story doesn't fare much better, but also it's more along the lines of what you would expect in a Rainbow Six game. There's actually not even much to talk about here because if you've played a Rainbow Six game, you've pretty much heard this story before. You do not play with the familiar characters that you already know from Rainbow Six Vegas on PC and console. Instead, you play as two characters, 
Brian, and Sean. That said, the missions in this game take place at the same time as the missions in the original Vegas game. This really doesn't amount to anything, it's just so that you know you're in Vegas and Irina is around, they name drop her a few times and that's about it. Anyway, there's a main bad guy terrorist that you gotta deal with. He managed to make chemical weapons that he plans to drop into Vegas' water supply. What do these chemical weapons do to a person? Let me show you what's gonna happen to the people of Las Vegas. Man, he showed me. Showed me by killing himself. Hell. Team, the car has just killed himself. It makes you start vomiting cum. As it turns out, this is actually his secondary objective. His primary objective is to blow up a nuke at the dam that you played on in Rainbow Six Vegas on PC and console. While this is the same location, the maps are entirely different. Anyway, you manage to stop him from using those chemical weapons in Las Vegas's water supply, then you go after this nuke. This happens to Sean. The pump overrides have been sabotaged. We've waited too long for this. The city of Sin is going to reap its wages at last. Sean, are you okay? The car race shot me, but I'm still operational. How? Some don't ask me how he's okay, I don't know. Never mind, just kidding, he just died in an explosion instead. You kill the main terrorist bad guy, you deactivate the nuke, and you win. Sean may have died in a predictable way, but it was heroic. So yeah, this is a basic Rainbow Six story. That said, this is Rainbow Six. Very, very few people are playing Rainbow Six Vegas for the story. They're playing it for the gameplay. So how does it hold up on the PSP? Well, it's a bit of a mess. Controls are awkward to say the least. For starters, they didn't even try with aiming. They just gave up and gave you lock on. The way this works is you hold the L button down when you're looking near an opponent, it locks onto them. You press upward with your aiming stick or triangle if you're aiming at the face buttons, and then that snaps onto their head so you can get a headshot instead. You can aim the traditional way if you press up with the D-pad and then you'll scope in. Just note there is a horrible amount of bloom in this game, and even sometimes on your first shot, your gun just misses for seemingly no reason. Hello? Jesus Christ, the guns sometimes just don't... You reload by double tapping the left trigger, you swap weapons by pressing right on the D-pad. Something I did find actually pretty nice is that if you double tap right on the D-pad to swap weapons, it'll just go to your primary gun so you don't have to cycle through the grenades. That's really convenient and I wish every PSP game did this. Oh, I almost forgot, the aiming is just as bad with an analog stick as it is with the face buttons. Yeah, you can remap the controls so that you can aim with the left analog stick, but it really feels like they just made the face buttons work with the left analog stick. If you move the stick in a circle, it'll make a square. So aiming the traditional way is pretty much impossible, you were just going to need to lock onto everything. Unless you're sniping, which then you have to do it the manual way, and it's just pain. Another bit of pain is the cover system, which is nowhere near as convenient as the original game is. This cover system happens automatically. If you step near a wall, you just kind of get glued to it. Now you can look around a wall, but there's no way to lean and aim that way. Basically, you just see an enemy, you lock onto them, you press the shoot button, you automatically pop around the wall. Then after you do that, you just kind of hold yourself out there and shoot at them. You can also use the snake camera and open doors while you're taking cover, but in general, taking cover is such an awkward thing to do in this game that I just stopped doing it and just kind of ran through shooting everyone using lock on. Okay, now that I explained how the controls are an awkward mess, let's actually talk about the gameplay. The gameplay in this game is actually more like an older Rainbow Six game than a Vegas game, or at least it feels like a mixture of the two. There's no regenerating health, but missions are so short that this never really was a big deal. Other than that, there's not really a whole lot to talk about. You fight the same enemy enemies the whole time, and the terrorists are not smart in this game. What the? What? What are they doing? Yeah, the AI is even worse than the original PC and console launch, and that's saying a lot. The only real catch this game has is that you play as two characters, not one. You play as both Brian and Sean. The way this works is that each level basically has its own section for these characters. You cannot swap back and forth whenever you want to, and you're not playing alongside the other character. Basically, you play as, say, Brian for a bit, and then eventually you either get pinned down by enemies or a door that's lock stops you or whatever. Then the gameplay swaps over to Sean, and he either snipes out the enemies that are trying to kill Brian, or he opens a door or turns on the power or something like that. It's a really interesting concept. The problem I have is that sniping in this game is so awkward in between the bad aiming and the bloom that I use my pistol for 90% of these missions. This game does also have multiplayer, but I have no way to test this, so I don't know what it's like. And it did claim to have terrorist hunt, or tarot hunt, as they call it in-game, 
but it's really disappointing. It's literally just single player levels. Why? Why not use the multiplayer levels? Like, you know, like how Terra's not supposed to be. This is so much worse. The weapons you can use are pretty decent for a PSP game, but very limited compared to the original Rainbow Six Vegas. So, ugh. Yeah, that's Rainbow Six Vegas on the PSP. There's not really a whole lot to say. It's not a port, so it's really interesting just in concept for what it is, but the execution is pretty much what you would expect, but kind of worse. This game is also very short. Like, you can beat it in under two hours short. I've played Coded Arms 1 and 2, I've played Nova. They actually function pretty well on the PSP, but this game is very awkward and is obviously a budget game. It doesn't look good, it doesn't sound good, the animations aren't good, the story is not compelling, and the gameplay is hella awkward, so I could not recommend this. Not unless you're like me and you're just morbidly curious because you actually love the Vegas games. The the Vegas games on PC and console, why are, damn it, they're called the same thing, this is confusing. I want to give a big thanks to everyone that joined me over on Twitch. My Twitch is twitch.tv slash jerry4gamingdragon. Everyone that subscribes on Twitch gets to see my video at least one week ahead of time. At the time I'm making this video, I haven't published my Coded Arms 1 and 2 videos, although they are done just sitting there unlisted. Far Cry 6 hasn't even come out yet, so you are really getting early viewing. Big thanks goes to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Check that link down below in the video information. And of course, a big thanks goes to you for watching this video.